who 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 actually who out there likes bed bugs oh my gosh apparently he ended up looking like a pepperoni pizza he had so many bite marks on him told it to my boyfriend when we first started going out like just a warning she does have instructions you must keep her um if not your skin might fall off and i was like oh. and then we go over to i don't know what they're actually called but we call them the butt machines <laughs> but you know what i mean i feel like it's all the tiktok girlies do Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. Today's episode, I feel like it's going to have maybe like a few added sound effects. Not on purpose, but that's because the day that I'm filming this podcast episode, we are currently in the middle of a huge storm in the UK. So much so that, um, actually it's a bit annoying, my house is out of power. My parents' house has power though. Obviously we're on two different power things. Um, Yeah, we've had, well, well, hopefully not, but... Basically, we've had really bad wind, rain, lots of trees have been down, roads have been closed, schools have been shut. Um, We also um, are supposed to have 90 to 100 mile an hour winds tonight slash this evening so yeah not looking forward to that so um if you are a um not only an audio listener but if you're also a visual visual watcher (laughs) i feel like i'm so used to people on podcasts saying audio listeners if you if you are not no if you are an audio listener i'm going to describe what i'm wearing right now because if you're watching you're probably like esme you haven't even well i mean i do have a bit of makeup on you know a bit of bit presentable but I am wearing a very snuggly fluffy jumper right now I still have my woolly hat on from being outside and doing the horses because it's a little it's getting a little bit chillier in here I really want to redo the podcast like background and set up for 2024 I feel like that could be really good fun especially as I have lots of exciting things planned for the podcast also if you are an audio listener um and you cannot see what I look like right now um also behind me you might be able to see a big wet patch on the wall And that is from all of the rain that has kind of basically come through the wall because it's the wind and the rain has been that strong. So yeah, um, wherever you are, I hope you're having a nice cosy, this is going to definitely going to be like a cosy kind of podcast episode if you can hear like the wind and the rain in the background. Even if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you guys are going into summer or spring and summer, you lucky people with the warmth. And even if you're like in Australia, lying on a beach, that kind of thing channel your your inner coziness because it's definitely going to be like a a bit more of a cozy episode but anyway before we begin I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK but they also ship all over the world and also thought I would let you know about the new Red Post range. I've actually recently done a giveaway actually the day this podcast is supposed to go out is the last day I think you can enter the day that the the giveaway is finished so if you're listening to this straight away, bam, on the Saturday, then um, go and enter if you want. Um, it's for a um, Red Post and Lemieux have teamed up and they have like a collaboration saddle pad, which is very cool. There's also the um, Red Post leggings, the Red Post base layer, and also there's a Lemieux and Red Post hat silk as well, which is very cool. If you're um, if you like a more of a toned down kind of set for your horse, that is for you because it's black and then it has like a really nice like goldy beige trim as well. So very presentable and also looks nice on every coloured horse out there. So anyway, um, yeah, go and check that out. Check out the giveaway check out the collection but anyway thank you so much to red post for sponsoring the podcast and let's get into things um so i feel like i've done like quite a lot of extracurricular activities recently which i've really been enjoying especially as especially as we're kind of going into winter and i feel like winter is such like a sad time of year obviously like christmas and everything i always feel like actually this is like my pet peeve or like thing that i tell people and i feel like a lot of people agree with me on this i feel like Halloween and Christmas are too early. People start getting excited about Halloween in September when we were going through a heat wave and it was pretty much still summer. I say let's hold on to summer as long as possible. I feel like Halloween should be in like November because it's only really November. Like we still have loads of leaves on the trees. I'm filming this like first week of November. Like I feel like Halloween should be like end of November. Like come on. Like the the leaves are barely orange at the moment. And I feel like Christmas should be end of January. I feel like it should all be pushed back a month because people start getting excited about Christmas in November when 
again, there's still leaves on the trees. It feels very autumnal. It doesn't feel... I mean, we're in the middle of a storm, so it does kind of feel wintry in that sense. But I feel like January, February, they are such sad months. Like, there's no joy. Everyone takes all their Christmas decorations down, all the lights, all the coziness, and you're just left with bleak, grey, cold, rain, clouds. Like, it's 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 not that fun. And everyone, like, decides, you know, January's the month to, like, go on a health kick and start a diet and that kind of thing. And I always think that's also the worst time to do it. Like, it's beginning of the year. I get new seasons, that kind of thing, new change, new me, that kind of stuff. I feel like, also, I'm talking about this way ahead. Like, it's barely even, like, new year yet. But anyway, as I was saying, I feel like if you're going to do that, do it in the summer. Do it when the weather's nice. Do it when, you know, going out for a jog actually feels quite fun because it's sunny outside. I feel like you're more going to stick to um, your kind of exercise plan or whatever. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, um, what was I going on about? Oh yeah, I feel like Christmas should be pushed back later, like end of January or maybe even February, because then you still have that something fun and cosy and warm to look forward to. Because January and February are just really sad. They're just really, (laughs) really sad months, especially if you own horses and, you know, you've got the wind and the rain and that kind of thing. So... Yeah, that is that is my proposition. I feel like t- Christmas 2020, well, technically it would be 2025. Put it at the beginning of the year. Like, who wants to start off the year being like, oh, taking down the Christmas decorations, no coziness, no warmth, when you could literally start the year off with a bang with Christmas? I feel like that's just so much better. Anyway, that's I know, like, Christmas is supposed to be on December 25th and that kind of thing because of... Um, you know, Jesus and that kind of thing, I guess. But I just, he could have been born in January. Like, come on, mate. <laughs> anyway, I feel like I don't want to be insensitive. But I just feel like it would be better. You know, they, they you, you have a leap year. You add like a year, a day every four years. Can't we just like shuffle Christmas around? Like we all just like come together and be like, yeah, let's put Christmas in January. Because like, I don't feel like it's it's cosy enough yet to be Christmas. I feel like I'm still in the spooky season. I still feel like it's Halloween time. Like the leaves again, as I said. Anyway, that's my little rant for the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> Let me know if you're watching on a podcast provider where you can comment if you also think that Christmas and Halloween and all those sort of things should move like a year, not a year, (laughs) we don't want to skip Christmas, move a month back. I just felt like it would be so much better. Anyway, um, sorry, back to what I was saying. I've um, done a few like new hobbies to go into kind of autumn, winter, to try and keep things interesting, try and stay active and do stuff. Um, One of those activities is actually going to the gym with one of my friends. And actually, I was such a gym girl. I feel like I'm more of like an at-home gym person now or definitely over the summer. Like when when it's like nice outside and it's sunny and that kind of thing. You know, I love going for a run or doing my little exercises that I get told to do by my physio to um, basically make my muscles stronger so I don't use my back in weird places and then hurt my back. Because, again, I feel like actually when we do redo the like podcast kind of studio, I would quite like to have a chair that has a back because at the moment I'm sitting on a stool and I always feel like I end up like a hunchback. So um, but then again, actually, is sitting on a stool good for your back because it actually makes you sit up and use your core? I don't know. If you're a back person or an osteopath or physio or whatever, let me know. I feel like I always come up with weird questions like this. I'm like, I am that person that I'll just like come up with something random and I'll just have to like Google it or search it to be like, I need to know the answer now I've thought about this thing. Um, Anyway. Oh yeah, so back to going to the gym. So me and my friend have started going to the gym. Now, back when I used to go to the gym before the pandemic, I was proper into the gym, like would go a few times a week, just because, again, in the winter, it's just so sad. I feel like your evenings feel a lot longer when you go to the gym or go for like a swim or something like that. Like I I am a swimming girl. I love swimming. Always been a swimming person. Um, But anyway... So me and my so yeah before I was just that person that would basically use the running machines and was too scared to use all the other ones. So me and my friend have started going to the gym again, and um, we are. I feel like I should film like a little little video on this, like a little short video or something, because it is just so funny. We are 
the definition of the two girls that go to the gym together for fun and have no idea what we're doing. My boyfriend, he's actually quite into like going to the gym and doing all that kind of stuff. He normally goes to, I think it's called like a CrossFit gym, where basically you go and do like circuits and there's someone there that is like leading your group and telling you what exercises to do. And basically that sounds to me like a military operation where there's one person and they shout at you and they make you do the thing, which in some ways I think would actually be quite good for me because I feel like when I do my um my like trainer D she does a lot of like exercises with me and to be fair when she shouts at me I do do the things and I do work hard um but anyway we just went to a normal gym and um the road actually to my boyfriend's gym was closed so he was like oh do you mind if I tag along with you one time and we we're like okay anyway um he arrived a little bit later because he'd been working and he came up to us and he was like oh what are you training today and me and my friend were just like, um, I'm not I'm like we we're not in with the gym lingo. He was like, oh, what machines have you been using? And again, we just don't we don't know what the machines are called. So I'm gonna go through our kind of gym routine as someone who is good at physical exercise but isn't a gym person. I think that's the best way I describe it. Like I'm quite fit and active, you know, having to look after four horses, ride two horses almost every day, like that kind of thing. And I like going for runs and swimming, but you know, using all the gym machines, it's not, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not an expert. So normally what we do is we go on the running machines and we start with an incline walk, which I feel like is what all the kind of like the I, I always say the TikTok girlies, but you know what I mean. I feel like it's all the TikTok girlies do. They do an um, you do like an incline walk, so it's like you're walking uphill, and apparently that is better at like I think burning calories than actually like running or something like that. It's good for your bum, I think. You know, like when you do hill work with a horse. So anyway, we do a bit of a walk, and we have a bit of a chin wag, a bit of a chat, have a bit of a catch up while we're walking because it's physical activity but it also it doesn't you don't get proper out of breath like you do when you're running so often we'll like talk for a bit and then we're like okay we'll do like a proper jog or a proper sprint and we'll probably do that for like 15 20 minutes like in, do, do a little bit of a walk bit of a run bit of an incline walk having a bit of a chat and then um and then when we get what we do is we do something for a while and then we get a little bit bored we move on to something else so then we went on to the cycling machines and i really like the cycling machines because you can go on your phone while you're cycling obviously when i'm with my friend we just chat away and it's fine but if you're there on your own you can just like scroll through instagram you know um that kind of thing i feel like also i feel like i would like if I properly wanted to get myself to go to the gym, what I would do is, to be strict with myself, this is what I always say, which I probably should do, get into like a really good Netflix series or something like that and only let myself watch it when I go to the gym and go on the running machines. And I feel like, bam, that would be my my way of forcing myself to go. But um, yeah, we've been playing around actually. We've been going to lots of like different gyms together, seeing which one we like the most to get a membership at properly. Um, but anyway, so... Yeah, sorry, we do the cycling machines. What do we do after that? Oh, they're, I don't know what they're called, like the leg machines where you kind of like, your legs are kind of like doing crunches. You can really tell I'm not a gym person here. I don't even know, like, you know when people take like protein powder and like, like, I don't know what it, what's that thing that some people do, creatine, I think? I I don't know, green juice? I don't know what any of this stuff is. Like, we are such like gym, gym noobs, I think you could call us. But we have good fun. And then, so we do those ones. And then we go over to, I don't know what they're actually called, but we call them the butt machines. <laughs> there are two different butt machines and we kind of like alternate. So there's one where, actually these are probably very good for you if you're a horse rider. There's ones where you kind of have to push your legs outwards and you like that's how you move the weight and then there's one where you have to kind of like push your legs inwards like you're squeezing like squeezing a horse I guess um so yeah that, that's always good fun and our, we were on the butt machines once and what's really awkward about this gym is is that the scales are right next to the butt machines so this like old guy just came along and was like standing at the scales next to me like doing my little clenches and I was like this is really weird because it is like a quite a small like little gym like in the countryside in the middle of nowhere but um and then after doing a bit of that we maybe do a bit of weightlifting. Like, that scares me a little bit because I feel like being being a woman you I mean uh, being anyone you don't want to lift weight incorrectly and then hurt yourself but like my mum always says <laughs> this is such a weird thing to say um this is from my mum who um 
is a doctor. She always says, women shouldn't do too much heavy lifting because it can be bad for your pelvic floor. So there we go. Because if, yeah, I think if you if you have a baby, you can, you know, everything goes, goes down a little bit. So um, that is, if you're a girl, and you ever want to get out of any heavy lifting, I use this excuse. When, actually, to be fair, I was going to say I use this excuse when I moved into the cottage. I actually did do a lot of carrying things upstairs with my dad where some um, not so family friendly language was said as we bashed stuff against the stairs and almost fell down the stairs and was trying to carry like dressing tables and things up. Anyway, um, there we go. What was I? Oh, yeah. Um, there were a few things where I was like, nope, sorry, can't carry that. I'm a woman. You know, my pelvic floor, got to, got to look after that. You know, 80-year-old Esme wants to be all intact down there. So there we go. Um, <laughs> that was. There's a little fun fact for you guys, for my ladies out there. Um, anyway, what else was I saying? Oh, yeah, so we did the butt machines. And then we go onto the, onto the floor and do the mats and do like a, oh, yeah, do the little bit of weightlifting, but very, very little. Um, I do my exercises from D that she tells me to do. I do some stretches as well, where I often click and... I don't really, if you're squeamish, I'm really apologetic for this. Again, I always say this podcast is not one to listen to when you eat most of the time. Anyway, I clicked my, I think it was my shoulder. And it honestly sounded like, you know, when you bite into like a chicken leg, like the end of it, where it's like gristly and it's that weird like cartilage kind of stuff. That is what it sounded slash felt like. And it was disgusting. It was so loud. Um, so yeah, I am that person that when I do my stretches, I, I'm clicking and creaking like an old house. There we go. Um, so then we did do a bit of that. Oh, there was this other machine that I went on. And it was actually quite good fun. I don't know what it is. The best way I could describe it is you lie down on it and it's kind of at an angle. So your feet are higher than your head and you can do sit-ups on it. And I that made my um, core or my like abs, my tummy hurt for about a week later. And because um, I feel like... Yeah, sit up. My my core, I'd say, is pretty strong. The one thing I'm really bad at that I need to get better at is doing press ups. I really, I have like quite strong arms, but for some reason, press ups I just really struggle with. But anyway, my boyfriend went and popped his head around the corner to say hello to us, and that was when I was like hanging on this sit up machine upside down, and I was saying to my friend like, "Oh, this is actually quite good for my back. I can like proper, you know, stretch out, like, put my arms out." And I, I felt like I, when I got up from it, I felt like I was like two inches taller. So that was quite good fun. And then when we've been doing that for about forty five minutes or whatever, like we feel like we've done enough. We've We've got sweaty we've got out of breath you know then we go to the pool have a little swim also I do not understand people who swim and then gym I feel like that's just the wrong way around like you do the gymming first and then you do the swimming afterwards it's kind of like a nice stretch at the end you know do a bit of breaststroke a bit of front crawl do a bit of you know stretching in the water a bit like hydrotherapy and then you can go in all the steam rooms and the sauna and that kind of thing afterwards if your gym has that this this gym I'd never been in the steam room before until the other day and when I went in there I was like, oh, like apparently this is like quite, a, it's, they were like, oh yeah, this like the steam room's not very good. Basically you press a button and then it takes three minutes for the steam to actually come out. And there was a lady in there who obviously, like this is her local gym, she goes there all the time. And the seat that I was sitting in, she was like, oh, just a little warning, you might want to put your legs up so they're on the seat so they're not kind of there because um, if not, your skin might fall off. And I was like, what? So anyway, I did what she said. I put my legs up. Anyway, three minutes later after we pressed the button, when the steam finally came off, came on, because I think it's a bit like a kettle. You have to kind of like warm up a little bit with this one. Anyway, oh my goodness, the heat from the steam, it was like I was sitting under a volcano. I had, it was like spitting like hot water at my legs, even though they were up. I could feel it kind of on the the back of my legs. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like I was like to my friend, like we need to get out of here. Like (laughs) this sauna or this, sorry, steam room is lethal. So yeah, that was good fun. Um, I don't think actually I have too many embarrassing, I don't think I have any embarrassing stories of the gym, which I feel like, 
is good knowing the track record if you've listened to the podcast for a while um i o- often embarrass myself somehow or have some sort of embarrassing story i do however hope my friend doesn't mind me telling this have an embarrassing story on my friend's behalf at the gym she said when she first started going there it was like one of the first few times she'd been there before she i can't remember if her key broke but basically this is the sort of gym where um there are lockers but you basically have to bring your own padlock and put it on the kind of locker and anyway i can't remember if she lost her key or like her key broke or something like that but she couldn't get into her locker and she had to get someone from reception to come in with like wire cutters and cut open the um kind of locker and i was like oh i feel like yeah that could be embarrassing so she's like yeah every time i come in i'm just worried that they look at me and think i'm the i'm the person that you know couldn't get into her locker so there we go. Um, that is kind of what I've been up to at the gym lately. I've I don't know what I think I've been sitting really weird. I think I've been sitting cross legs. I've I've just got really bad pins and needles. I think I'm gonna have to have a little a little break, make a little cut here, guys, because my foot my foot is burning. I remember the first time I got pins and needles. This is such a weird story. I have such a I have a really good memory of really obscure things. I remember getting pins and needles for the first time. I think I was four or five and I went to Disneyland with my dad and just my dad alone because my brother was like really young and my mum was like having, I think, because um, my brother's not that much. He's, I think he's exactly two years and two weeks younger than me because we ha- we were actually supposed to have the same due date. I was a week early and he was a week late. So there we go. Um, so anyway, she was just like, I've had enough of these children, (laughs) said to my dad, just take her away somewhere. So he took me to Disneyland, which was a very magical trip. And I'm very appreciative that I had such an incredible childhood from my parents and my family and things. But anyway, we were going around Disneyland and I think I've been playing in like a sandpit or something at some stage, or there was somewhere where it was sandy. And I just remember stopping at one of the water fountains and being like, oh, can I get like the sand out of my shoe? It's really annoying me. And anyway, got, got the sand out and then it kept, my foot kept feeling weird and then I realized I'd had I had pins and needles in my foot and it was the first time I'd ever experienced it and I was like what is this witchcraft like why is my why is my foot feeling so weird so yeah I feel like that's a really odd thing to remember but I just remember it being like such a weird feeling having pins and needles so there we go it's starting to go a little bit I'm gonna do do a little dance I feel like maybe that will help if I just jump up and down a bit and I'll be back when my pins and needles is gone because I feel like I'm finding it very distracting (laughs) just gonna just gonna jump (laughs) i don't know if i'm gonna keep this in or not i feel like it looks really fun if you're watching it on video but on audio you're probably like what is this girl doing i'm just stamping my foot go away pins and needles okay all right, I finished doing my seagull impression. I actually, I feel like I've I've done my seagull girl impression by accident multiple times before. Also, when I mean seagull impression, I mean like, you know when seagulls stamp on the ground um, to pretend it's raining and then the worms come up thinking that it's raining and actually then the seagull like eats the worm. That's what I was meaning, not like a caca. That's not what seagulls make. That's the, what, what even makes that noise? What bird? <laughs> you know what I mean though, not like a seagull screech. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I went mini golfing with my friends last summer and um, yeah, I was nicknamed the seagull that day because every time I hit the ball doing mini golf, um, yeah, basically <laughs> if I missed the hole or I did a really bad shot, to let go of my frustration because I am a competitive person I would just do lots of little stamps on the ground I didn't really I didn't like at first like I just did it and they were like Esme what are you doing and I was like I'm just frustrated like I'm not really an angry person but I just yeah although actually I tell you what I did get a little bit ang- not angry I you know how people get hangry I feel like I'm not that much of a hangry person but what I am is if I am sleep deprived I get is it slangry? 
<laughs> is that like a can I make that up as a thing slangry um I I promise you I'm not a mean person I just get a little bit grumpy when I am very tired and um I don't know if I've ever talked about the triangle actually this used to be a thing where my dad would embarrass me and he would tell this to everyone told it to my boyfriend when we first started going out like just a warning she does have instructions you must keep her within the triangle at all the times and the triangle is sleep food and caffeine if one of those tr- points is gone then she will not be happy and she's quite easy but as long as she's in the triangle you're all good <laughs> so um all that caffeine for a while i don't know i've really talked about this on the podcast but i stopped drinking caffeine at the beginning of the year which i feel like goes against my like starting new year's resolutions at the beginning of the year when it's really horrible weather but i just felt like i was like i'm gonna see if drinking less coffee makes me feel less anxious so i had so i weaned my way off coffee and um went pretty much until a few weeks ago having no coffee at all this year i think i had three coffees um one when i went on a night out with my friends for her birthday one when i went and saw coldplay because that was a late night in concert and i think i had a i had a coffee actually on my granddad's 80th birthday but that was a like a coffee on ice cream what's that called really good i was just really tired because you know when you eat loads of food and it just like wipes you out because all of your blood kind of goes to your stomach and doesn't really like what your brain doesn't really work so just like in like a coma of digestion um i had that so i was like i need to have a little, little bit of a coffee get back into you know the birthday spirit um but yeah, I think they're the only really times I've had a coffee, really. Um, and when I did have that coffee, I felt like Esme on 150%. Like, I was on. I was ready. I was, like, bouncing off the walls. <laughs> um, however, I have um, started having coffee again because I did realise that I don't think it really made me any less anxious. It just made me more tired. And we are going into what I call the youtube or social media harvest where um i just have a lot of work on at the moment so i'm like you know what going back on the bean having coffee again and you know what it's been all right i've been it's it's been good i don't have as much as i normally did before i'd i'd have like my coffee regiment (laughs) would be one in the morning when i wake up and then one after lunch and i'm just going for an after lunch coffee now i'm a tea in the morning coffee at midday sort of person so that's that's my coffee update for you all um to be fair i think it did start creeping back into my diet when the pumpkin spice lattes came into season so there we go um but yeah also i've got a lot of long days late nights oh yeah sorry i was talking to you that's what we were going on about sorry we've done a whole little section on coffee here we'll go i was talking to you about my very long day the other day it's actually only like two days ago in the day i'm recording this um i went to a different country for the day and i feel like if you said that to somebody in america or like a really big country like australia or i don't know somewhere like that they would be like oh my gosh that is wild but anyway because we're in the uk which is I think Texas, to put it in pers- to perspective for my American viewers, the UK is four times smaller than Texas. So like, if you can imagine the UK being like, no, Texas being four UKs, that is how big Texas is in <laughs> comparison. That's only one of your states. So we are actually very small. Um, and also where I live, we're not too far away. You know, we're in the South. We're not too far away from Europe. So um, for me, we're like an hour to London stayed in London the night before, got up at like 4.30, 4 o'clock, got a train from London to the Netherlands. So we went through France and then, did we go through Belgium as well? I need to look at which, I I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm letting the UK down on our geography front. Did we go through Belgium? Was it Belgium? Brussels? Yeah, we went through Brussels. Um, but anyway, there's this thing called the Eurostar, which is basically a train that goes from London into um kind of mainland europe and yeah that's quite cool you can go to paris from london in what like three hours is it is it even less than that like two hours would you say so that is quite cool that is one thing that i love about living in the uk is that we are so close to europe you could literally go to france for a long weekend you could go to um 
Germany for a long weekend. You could go to Brussels for a long week. That's not a country. You could go to Belgium for a long weekend. Or the Netherlands. So we went to the Netherlands for the day. um, And we were actually filming at a world champions stables. We're at um, Lottie Fry's place. Um, And we were also meeting meeting international show jumper Jodie Hall McAteer there as well. Who... um, the three of us are all um, London International Horse Show ambassadors. I'm actually going to be at the London International Horse Show on the Monday and on the Friday if you guys want to come along. Also, if you don't have tickets yet, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm being that, that social media gal, that person. If you would like to get a discount on your tickets on most of the days, you can use the code esmelon23 i'm going to spell that out because when you do look at it on like on screen or on like a written down (laughs) especially if it's like in text so i had so many people messaging me being like what's esmelon esmelon like 23 like what is that but it's esme and then l-o-n so e-s-m-e-l-o-n 23 that is the code to use if you want a discount on most days at the horse show. But anyway, I was there with the London International Horse Show team for the media day. We had a great day, actually. It was really good fun. Um, met all the dressage horses, met some very famous horses as well, met some stallions, saw lots of doggies. Oh my gosh, they had so many really cute dogs in the yard. Um, they had this big dog i can't remember what breed it was but it was huge and that was called tapas which i thought was very cute and then they also had like a little sausage dog as well he was very sweet so yeah we had a great day lots of pony cuddles or should i say horse cuddles and lots of doggy cuddles as well so filmed a barn tour so hopefully that will be coming on the channel i want to say next week so keep an eye out for that i've done like a little teaser on my other socials of a little behind the scenes so yeah if you want to see what a world champion at dressage riders yard is like look out for that one um but yeah we had really good fun uh me and my dad we were proper teasing my mum we have like a little family group chat and we're like oh we're feeling a little bit itchy because obviously in the news recently there's been a lot about how i think it's in paris that there's like loads of bed bugs at the moment although somebody was talking to me about this and they were saying that apparently the media has just like put it like there's like maybe like a tiny bit more it's not even that much more like it's been like blown out perspective but um my mum has like I don't know if fear is the right word but she was just like it's very I mean I feel like most people are very like not who 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 actually who out there likes bed bugs who goes oh yeah love a good bed bug me anyway (laughs) um when I was younger I didn't actually realize bed bugs were a thing I thought it was like the boogie monster or whatever or what what like you know the monster under the bed or that kind of thing like you know that's not real i thought bed bugs were like that because people always say oh like sleep tight don't let the bed bugs bite i just thought it was like you know because it rhymed i just didn't realize bed bugs were a thing because obviously we don't really have them over here in the uk like i don't know anyone who's ever had bed bugs in the uk so there we go like no friends family anything like that um but i the first time i heard about bed bugs was when my dad went away to america he went on this sounds like such like a midlife crisis holiday (laughs) he's looking so embarrassed in the background (laughs) listening to this but him and some mates when when they were all hit about i think it was when they all hit about 40 they hired some harley davisons and went across route 66 on some motorbikes together on like a proper like lads lads holiday kind of thing um but anyway they were saying that he was telling me the story that apparently the they stayed in like some real you know gritty motels that kind of thing like camped some days um i just really i remember very vividly him telling me some story about a skunk because um he got me and my brother little skunk plush teddies or like soft toys um as like a little like sorry i was away for a week is like a present kind of thing um i don't know if we still have those those skunks anyway um um so yeah sorry back to bed bugs the one hotel that they like was like a bit of a nicer hotel that they stayed in that was the hotel they got bed bugs in so anyway i just fondly well i say fondly i don't really know if this is a fond memory or not but i remember very well being about nine ten i think i was about ten i would say i think it was just before i started secondary school or high school um so anyway yeah i remember my dad coming home from this trip and my mum being like 
leave your bags outside, strip down naked, like not even your pants. Obviously, don't worry, I did not see my dad's unmentionables. Um, <laughs> but anyway, him like running into the house, straight into, into the shower, showering, and just my mum shouting at him to get naked. So there we go. Um, and then her just like fumigating everywhere, like putting everything in the washing machine, even his bag. Like, yeah, she was like, no bed bugs are coming into this house. But apparently he was like, he had like a few bites and that kind of thing but his mate that he was sharing a room with oh my gosh apparently he ended up looking like a pepperoni pizza he had so many bite marks on him and i feel like i can relate to that because when i was in south africa um with my friend lydia she she barely got any bites me on the other hand i got so many bites and i'm a very like conscious person like with sun cream skin cancer that kind of thing like i am a very naturally like pale person and i feel like also having like medical parents i've been brought up with make sure you have like your long sleeve base layer on if you're swimming in the sea um wear a sun hat wear sunglasses which is all very good advice um but also wearing about 50 layers of sun cream and looking like casper the friendly ghost so i'm covered in all of this white sun cream and that's just been like ingrained into my brain like do not get sunburned i think i've been sunburned once in my whole entire life and i feel like that is pretty good going for someone who is almost the same color as most wedding dresses so um yeah i was very good at putting sun cream on laid out in the shade in my swimming costume had a little nap while we're in south africa woke up and i had been bitten all over myself but the one place that they went for the most was my bum so all these like you know flies and things that was obviously the tastiest juiciest place um so yeah that wasn't too fun i was so itchy i had this one bite that was so big um i don't know if i'll be able to find a picture of obviously this podcast so you won't be able to see it anyway but uh, i'll try and describe it to you it was probably about the size of like uh, uh, was it like a little orange called a clementine? A clementine? You know what I mean? Like a little Christmas orange. It was like about that size on my arm. And we, I don't know if it was a spider bite or an ant bite or so, I don't know what bite it was, but I had a proper reaction to that. Like that was, that was a gnarly bite. Um, sorry. We, oh yeah, we were on to <laughs> bed bugs. That's what we were talking about. Um, so yeah, that is my best advice. Make sure you, you wear your bug spray as well as your sun cream. Um, but yeah, I think also, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm going to have to search this up. Again, I always think of like really weird things like this and then I have to like search them. Um, but I, I, isn't, I swear there was like some scientific test that they did or experiment where apparently you're more likely to be bitten by flies depending on what blood type you are. Because obviously sometimes they, you know, want to suck your blood like little vampires. Um, but if you, yeah, I don't, is it personal information for me to say like what blood type I am? You know, like obviously you don't want to say like your address on line and things like that but um i know what blood type i am i'm actually quite a rare blood type should i say my blood type is that fun or should i leave people in suspense <laughs> is that like a weird thing to say i i remember i had this game on my i had a pink nintendo ds Lite. i am that generation of kids where i wasn't an ipad kid i was a nintendo ds kid um and i remember it being like really weirded out because i said to my mum like when I first started this game, you know, there's like the character customization. So like you pick what color hair you want, what color eyes you want, like, I don't know, stuff like that. Anyway, to choose like your personality, they made you pick what blood type you were. And I remember little five, six year old me going to my mum being like, why do they want to know my blood type? But I think in some cultures, apparently your blood type is linked to like your personality a bit like, um, this might be completely wrong or completely different, but I think it's a bit like, you know, when people um, with like star signs, maybe like to do with your blood type is what you're like as a person. But I feel like everyone's on the edge of their seat now um, of what blood type I am. So my blood type, drum roll, please. Mm, that was not a very good drum roll. Ooh. I am O negative. And the reason why I found that out is actually, um, I remember being really excited to have a baby one day because my mum was like you'll find out what blood type you are when you have a baby because obviously if things go wrong and you need a blood transfusion they need to know like what blood type you are um but anyway i found out at the age of 18 
um, when I went to Senegal with the Brook Charity because before when I went to Senegal I had to have like a full on like health check and examination and that kind of thing um, and to make I, think, I don't know if it was because I was going to Senegal I think it was because it, I was going with the charity and for insurance reasons reasons they needed to make sure that you know I wasn't just going to like keel over and die while we were out in like a foreign country <laughs> so um, anyway I found out what blood type I was then and yeah I um, so I am I'm a special blood type actually I am the universal blood donor so I should really give blood because anyone can have my blood but I can't have many people's blood so there we go all right guys we are we are putting our science caps on today I've just done some googling and I found out that they did a study actually this is true this is fact. I mean, it's what the internet says, so I've got to see everything with a pinch of salt. But they did do a study. I don't know how big the sample size was, because again, that obviously determines like how accurate things are. But apparently they got a buffet of human blood or humans to see what mosquitoes or what the flies, I don't know what flies they were. I should definitely have read that a bit deeper, but to see what they went for more. And apparently, if you're O type blood, they were um the flies were twice as likely to go for you. So there we go. That's why they went for me. Maybe it's because I'm O negative, the universal blood donor, that like all the flies love me because anyone can have my blood and maybe my blood's got something special in it. I don't know. But there we go. Um yeah, I've, I've always been a bit scared about giving blood because I have low blood pressure. Like, I, I remember going to the doctors and then doing a blood pressure thing. So I'm not a fainty person. I don't think I've ever fainted, but I've, I'd be worried that I would faint if I had a lot of blood taken from me. I've had blood tests before, but when you give blood, it's quite different. But yeah, I really feel like I probably should do that because if I have a baby one day and I'm going to have, and I need like a blood transfusion or something like that, I feel like I need to give back to the community. Oh, this is such like a weird thing. And I'm pretty sure this is like a, a story but um I think I've told this maybe once before in my like vet girl era podcast but I just remember when I used to work at the vets they had this massive dog I think it was a Great Dane and if they ever needed to do a blood transfusion he lived like down the road and they'd get him in give him like a load of food and yeah we'd just take blood from him for like like a little tiny chihuahua or something so yeah I just sorry that just reminded me think of that sorry we've been talking about blood for a while we're gonna change the subject now I'm really sorry this is again not not your normal um yeah sorry I feel like we've talk, been talking more about that than going to you know the Netherlands but anyway yeah we didn't get bed, bed bugs we were saying when we were all on, all on the Eurostar together we were like oh, what what would what should do you reckon we should just like jump up and be like oh my gosh bed bugs and see if like everyone else jumps up but we didn't we were too scared I feel like that would have been really weird oh I saw a video online the other day and it was of a guy who was on the tubes in London because apparently some of the tubes in London because I still don't understand why they have soft cushioning seats because I always think that's a bit gross like obviously like I swear in the subway in New York they have like plastic or like metal seats that you sit on that you know you can wipe off but if someone you know has a little accident on the tube like that's just gonna seep into these fabric seats like I don't know that just doesn't seem very hygienic to me but anyway he was saying oh he was saying to everyone on the platform let's all like shout bed bugs when everyone gets when we get on the thing and see if we can sit in everyone's seats but like musical chairs i don't think though people did it in the end but anyway that's a little funny funny well not even that funny an interesting wildly interesting anecdote for you all anyway what else have i been up to lately apart from going to the gym and not getting bed bugs um i've been really into gardening lately actually me and my boyfriend we did it we went to the garden center the other day and i got all of my gardening tools that i need so got myself a rake got myself a hoe got myself some trowels like a little thing to kneel on got some like little they called shears little hedge cuttingy like little thing big scissors garden scissors <laughs> that kind of thing got some some not pruners not pliers what are they called secateurs i thought it was secateurs secateurs <laughs> oh well you know gardening things um got some gardening gloves yeah and we were like i've been I've been in my gardening era lately. I've been really enjoying it. Um, I feel like I probably should have got into gardening maybe in the summer when the weather was a bit nicer. But to be fair, this summer I've just been non-stop. So actually, it's quite a nice little activity to do. Go out and do some gardening. Come in, have like a tea and biscuit to warm up. Go out and do a little bit more. That kind of thing. We actually had that. We had to have a schedule to be fair it was a good time to have a little cup of tea break this is such a british saying but um it started hailing 
in yeah mid October just started hailing and we were like what is going on what is this but there we go so I had a little tea and coffee break and then the sun came out it was great um but yeah so I've got these flower beds at the front of my house I say the front of my house my house is really weird I only have one door to my house, which is around the back. So when all my friends first came to my house, they were around the front of my house and they were like, Esme, where, where's the door? How do we get in? I'm like, oh, it's around the back. Like, I only have one door. So there we go. I think there used to be a side door actually to my house and they made it into a window. So anyway, um, things with a hundred year old cottage, everything moves around. The kitchen used to be in the living room. The living room used to be the kitchen. Everything's, you know, had a little shake about. Um, the cupboard under the stairs is now a bathroom or a toilet. That used to be a cupboard, like a little Harry Potter cupboard. I've got my Harry Potter toilet. But anyway, the front um, kind of like bed next to my door, uh, I think used to be kind of like a little bit of a herb bed or a herb garden because it's got rosemary, which, you know, like I am basically all of my neighbours. <laughs> this is so funny. I, mean, I feel like this is only where I live, but I'm very close to all my neighbours. Um, and we're like in like a little community. I feel like I don't even like live in a village. I live literally in a woods that people can't see from the outside world with like a few other houses. <laughs> but anyway, everyone comes to my house if they need some rosemary. Don't worry, they did ask. They were like, the previous owners would let me nick some <laughs> rosemary from the rosemary bush in your garden. Do you mind if I nick some as well? I was like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no don't worry about it it's all good um anyway so um the rosemary bush has had a bit of a prune because it was going over the path so um I got to the stage where we've done a good bit of pruning and my path honestly feels like twice as wide there were loads of like weeds that were coming up um kind of on like the little pathway as well that I've taken out definitely gonna need to like I was going to say re-sand, re-cement some of the bricks because they're a little, little wobbly in places. But hopefully in the spring, the next job is to save up for a patio. So um, yeah, that's the next exciting thing for the cottage. I feel like I should do some gardening episodes, like cottage renovation garden episodes. Also, I haven't even said this yet. It's been one year at the cottage. I feel like today I think I might put up um, some content as like a little happy one year cottage. I mean, it's just been over a year my first night actually in the cottage was on halloween night 31st of october which i feel like is i think i've mentioned that before it feels kind of spooky for a first night in a house you've never slept in before but there we go it was good fun i was sleeping downstairs because upstairs had carpet moths so i was it felt like i was in like a little studio apartment which is quite fun um but anyway yeah so um yeah anyway sorry herb garden in in the front flower bed um there was also a lot of mint there now my grandma um, and granddad very kindly every now and again come and do a little bit of gardening for me because they love gardening um and my grandma was like oh can I nick some of your mint I was like yeah sure go ahead like it's the least you can do from very kindly doing some gardening for me anyway she got this mint um apparently she took it home washed it cut it up prepared it was gonna make it into a mint sauce apparently it wasn't really minty at all and they didn't eat it and they were like no like it looks like mint and it kind of smells like mint but I don't know if it's like a lemon lemon grassy minty kind of thing I'm not a plant expert I would like to become a plant expert though but yeah so apparently mint also or the mint that's not mint (laughs) basically just wiped out all the other flowers all the other plants apart from this massive rosemary bush um in that flower bed so me and my boyfriend the other weekend um our mission which we were successful with managed to take out all of the mint so that is gone so at the moment the front of my house is looking very naked very bare so i want to get some new plants to put in the front of my garden so are there any plant experts give me a dm let let me know in the comments if you're watching this on a podcast provider where you can comment let me know what plants i should put it's a south facing garden which is really nice and it's at the front of the house but i don't want anything that's gonna like wreck my house I, i think we might have to like just take all the soil out and put new soil in because it's just full of mint root and i do not want that mint coming back to haunt me (laughs) so um yeah that's what we've been up to recently there's also a few paths down the garden which kind of go into like a wooded area that i've cleared as well i feel like forget the gym you know lifting up all these plants there are all these reeds as well that have kind of taken over the bottom of my garden that i've slowly been like getting rid of so yeah that's been fun we also the other um with me and my boyfriend we were doing some gardening we had ruby with us and she had the 
best morning ever. She was running around the garden. She has um, this one big stick or log, should I say, that she runs around with. She was having a blast, but oh my goodness, she was so muddy afterwards. Now, my house, I've realised that I don't actually have a hose pipe. Normally, you know, use the hose pipe, give her a hose off. So she was very lucky. She had a... Um, this is also something that I learned from the internet that apparently is a very British thing. You know, um, what's it called? You know, in your sink, if you're British, <laughs> it's very often to have a washing up bowl. Apparently, in certain countries, that's just not a thing. It's not normal. Here in the UK, also, I feel like washing up bowls are very practical because, number one, if you have something that's maybe got a bit of sauce on, like if you had a bowl or like a jug with like tomato sauce in, for example, and you needed to wash it out, you can just put it down the sinkhole rather than putting it in the washing up bowl. And then the washing up bowl stays like kind of cleaner water. Also, a lot of sinks in the UK, especially if you have like a farmhouse sink like mine, where it's made of kind of, is it porcelain? Like kind of China kind of thing. If you're washing up glasses, you don't want to be clinking that around in a china or porcelain sink do you because if not it's going to smash it's going to break you know glass is very delicate but in a washing up bowl plastic against glass you're all good you're all fine so i feel i don't know i just find that really strange that apparently americans or different countries or cultures just don't have washing up bowls but i love my little washing up bowl I've got a nice cream one goes with my farmhouse sink it's great it's very useful and also you know, it holds all the water. Like, obviously, I know with sinks, you can, like, put the plug in. But I feel like you can, like, rinse off the things that have all the gross food on. And then you can put it in the washing up bowl without bits of food, you know, touching your fingers. And that's one thing that I feel like, like I am the sort of girl who, you know, mucks out horses, stables. I have literally recently jumped into a muck heap for my riding dares video. But food on someone else's plate or, like wash i don't know i just find that really gross i don't know what it is <laughs> much rather touch horse poo than touch someone's so i i don't mind if it's someone that i've like seen them eat or that kind of thing but if it was a stranger's plate or a stranger's food or cutlery i don't know what it is but that just it i'd rather wear gloves i don't know I, I don't know i don't know it just makes me feel funny but there we go um what was it talking about gardening back to gardening not washing up bowls um but yeah um yeah had a good time gardening need to get some plants to fill in you know my empty beds but so far so good i've been enjoying it it's a nice little activity listen to a podcast while i'm doing it you get outside you're active and you feel productive when you do it as well it's so nice i cleared this one bit or oh, to tell you what's really satisfying getting my little hedge cutting snipping things i have this box hedge that totally grown over this path where my the previous owners very kindly they actually left a bench for me and there's a nice little bench bit in the bottom of the garden which is really nice to sit on so i you know just you know pruning this box hedge was so satisfying i tried to make it look all fancy as well like a professional gardener and done it where you know it's all in like kind of like a square shape as well so yeah that was really good fun so anyway i feel like i've been rambling on for quite a while hopefully i don't think there have been too many sound effects from the wind and rain this is supposed to be the best part of the day it's still raining but at least it's not 100 mile an hour winds which we're supposed to have later so if you're in the in the uk and you're currently going through storm kieran i'm wishing you all the best i hope you and your family and your animals and your horses stay safe and yeah anyway thank you so much everybody for listening to today's podcast thank you so much to red post for sponsoring the podcast be sure to check out their new range with lumia but anyway i'm going to be off now i hope you all have a lovely weekend and yeah thank you so much for listening and i'll see you all next time bye